I think we've got an extra jet ticket. Oh, yeah. In Rome, £40,000 goes up in smoke, and there's some things money just can't buy. It's four weeks in the UK, away from all the contamination. It extends their life by up to two years. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze on a far-flung holiday. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. They didn't tell me I needed photographic evidence. It's not regulations without the whole of the UK. I've got to get on it to get my children. I've got ID. I've got all the rest of it. I've said I'll fax it. Please let me on the flight so I can get my kids. It's not compulsory in any other airline. I'll put it on to the next one. Sorry? I, I can't. Them. My kids are on their own in Edinburgh. Please let me get there. Gillian Waddell's due to pick up her three children from her parents in Scotland, but never having flown EasyJet before, she's arrived without any photographic ID. It's not mandatory requirements throughout the UK. British Airways don't demand it. A driving licence is what's required. Before you book the flight, you should have uh, signed something for that. You sent it. I haven't. My secretary booked it in the office, I'm, and I'm sorry about it, but I've got to get to my kids. And if you require photographic evidence, it's not like in a video. To make matters worse, she's supposed to drive the children back south overnight so they can fly on holiday to Spain from Heathrow tomorrow morning, and time isn't on her side. I've got elderly parents who are there doing a, a good job until I get there. They have to leave at 7, and it's because it's hard to drive miles out of Edinburgh to pick them up, bring them all the way back in, and then drive 11 hours back down from Edinburgh to London in order for them to get a flight. With her passport locked up at home, Gillian's chances of getting her children off on a holiday are looking slim. It's late morning and Gatwick-based Captain Chris Pell has just finished his shift. Uh, well, just come in from Nice. Been up since quarter past three this morning, so I'm feeling a bit jaded. But in approximately an hour and a half, we've got another supply of children coming in. Another group of children, I should say, uh, from Belarus, the Chernobyl Children Lifeline. Two years ago, Chris and his wife Debbie took in two ten-year-olds from Belarus. The country was devastated by the Chernobyl nuclear disaster 20 years ago. Right, here we go. For the kids, it was an experience of a lifetime. <laughs> this year at Gatwick, Chris and his wife Debbie are waiting for a new set of arrivals. But this time, they're being a bit more ambitious. We have Ivan, who's 18, and Mikita. They're a family of five that are coming over. And the three other girls are Yana, Karina, and Diana. This particular family of five are orphans. Their mother died. They only had their mother, and she died at Christmas. And they're now living with the neighbour. So I think it'll give the neighbour a break, and it'll give them a little bit of time away. It's not long before a wave of Belarusian children arrive, and Chris and Debbie make their introductions. And this, is, this is Chris. I'm Chris. Hello. How are this you? Is that. is that yours? Is that yours? Chris? Is this, is this your family? Hello. Ivan? Yes. Do you know who this is? Oh, they're wonderful children. I'll say hello to Ivan. Ivan. Ivan, is it? Ivan. <laughs> OK. Do you want me to take that? Shall I hold it? OK. Shall I take it? Yeah? Okay. Cool. Good. OK. Bristol Airport. Check-in for Inverness is open, and luggage is moving smoothly off down the ramp. Except, that is, for student Peter Loveday and his friends. If you can get some kind of bubble wrap or packaging for them, then we'll accept them, otherwise we can't accept OK, how long have we got, anyway? We've got our hour and two minutes, so about 12 o'clock. Mm, okay. We're exciting, trying to go out to the land's end, and uh, we've just been told we need boxes for our bikes. We haven't got any boxes, and we might not be able to fly. We should do it plane. Doing it for charity, so it's a real pain. Mm. What charity are you doing it for? A uh, charity called the Mells of James House, a children's hospice. So it's, um, yeah, it's a good cause. But obviously we need to get our bikes on, otherwise we're not going to be able to do it. So it's easy to get paid. What they really need are four 80-pound padded bike bags, readily available from your local bike shop. But being students, they've come up with a slightly cheaper alternative. Cardboard boxes from Smith's. Oh, and a beach mat. How sufficient? Do you have to cover the wheels or what? It has to be... Pretty covered because I mean, if the pedals rip through that, we're talking about the whole of the aircraft getting damaged. It's the time element that says we didn't plan on doing this, we thought it would be straightforward, take your bike on. With limited packaging available, the boys have less than an hour to wrap their bikes securely. Are you yes, I'm from the four o'clock to Edinburgh, right? In Luton, Gillian Waddell's now trying to convince manager Leo Jones to let her on the Edinburgh flight. The woman told me I can't travel with that ID. I have to get on the flight. I've got 
three children waiting on a very tight timetable so that I can pick them up, drive them back, then drive 11 hours back from Edinburgh to London. What time no, is that? Four, four o'clock three minutes ago. You won't be able to get on a four o'clock flight now. Let me just make sure that one is on the side. No, the flight's forwarded now. Please, I can't get you on there. Is it gone? Is it shut the doors? It's irrelevant of gone or not because you don't have the correct ID with you. That's what's preventing us getting you on board the aircraft. But if I, if you give me a fax number, I could get my office to fax a copy to you right now. Well, we can't accept the fax. That's not an official form. Oh, I didn't know. Nobody else does this. British Airways don't do this. Nobody else does it. What can you do to help me? I can happily give you a free transfer to a later flight when you can get us a document. I can't. I can't get all the way home. I'll never get back until the 6 o'clock. It's only five hours to get back from London. Somebody career it, maybe? No, I haven't got money to spend £90 yeah. couriering it. Yeah. I'm going to get the flight to get there. Yeah. We've got made of money. Why do you think we've got a nice jet ticket? We've got a couple more seats on the later flights. And I can we go ahead and sell them? Or did you want one of them? But I haven't got my passport. I think you're going to sell it because you're saying that you can't fly later on today. I can't get back and forward since the four and a half hours. It takes eight hours. Do what you want. Officially, the flights are non-transferable and refundable, so we could have said, you have lost everything. But we're not like that. We do have hearts. We try to help people where we can. Um, but she just couldn't see it. With her children's holiday hanging in the balance, Gillian now has a mad dash to Heathrow to catch an alternative flight. I'll catch the 6.25, which will get me into Edinburgh at 7.35. Yeah, for I'll then drive two hours to where my children are, who have been waiting for four hours, and we'll then jump in a car and drive all the way back down to London, breaking or risking our necks and all the rest of it, in order to make the time to... In Weybridge, Surrey, Debbie Pearl has arrived back home with some very tired visitors. Asleep. <laughs> they asleep? Yeah. Must be okay. shattered. Absolutely shattered, isn't it? I think Nikita. Nikita's fast asleep in here. Is he? Come on. Oh, he's okay, don't worry, darling. Come on. Oh, I believe it. No, no, it's okay. I'm gonna mind your head. Okay? Ready? Well, that's gone. They may be tired, but once inside, curiosity gets the better of them. Yeah, I think they look fantastic, don't they? I mean, they look, uh, I mean, obviously they're exhausted, but now they're the toys. It's a shame about the weather, that's the only thing. Having braved temperatures of minus 35 in Belarus, the weather doesn't seem to bother the youngsters too much. Oh, they come from a village, village life. Um, very poor, very simple life. And they live in a one-story wooden shack in the countryside in Belarus. I think when the kids sort of turn up, to our home and, and the house they're staying in, uh, it would be mind-boggling for them. It really helps children coming over here because four weeks in the UK, away from all the contamination that's still in Belarus, extends their life by up to two years. So physically it's going to help them, as well as just having a great time. At Bristol, the boys have been busy wrapping their bikes in, well, whatever they can lay their hands on. It may not look pretty, but as long as it works. That is Supervisor Michelle, who's going to have to OK the wrapping before they can check in. Can you use your wrapping? I think I need a little bit more tape round. Okay. Yeah, just to make it look really... It's quite bizarre, actually. As long as I get the pedal up. Yes, if you can get out of the way, that, that's fine. Yeah. I think perhaps the guys worked on Blue Peter at some time or anything. It's quite bizarre. But uh, it's better than nothing. Michelle's fairly forgiving, which is good, because the reason for the Demelza James House charity trip is more heartfelt than Peter first let on. It's James is my cousin, and he died of a terminal illness called MPS when he was 11 years old. And they set up, my auntie and uncle set up a charity uh, called James House in order to help children. And um, I thought it was a worthy cause to, um, to support, so that's why I'm getting some money for that. So Nearly done. <laughs> John, how's this coming on? <laughs> With only one bike covered and another three to go, the boys are rapidly running out of time. The, the truth is that if we run out of carbon, we can't go on this trip, unfortunately. So, um, it's a major emergency. To sky.com forward slash on demand TV. Uh, Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Where Sir? is the where is your hotel? The city seems old for the Belfast. Right, you're not gonna, do you have anything photographic at all? Any photographic ID? Because you can't travel without it. Sunwa Zhao has been no, travelling with friends from Newcastle. She's booked on the last flight from Belfast to Edinburgh, but she's left her passport at a hostel in the city centre. What's your address? 
the, the only thing would be really tomorrow morning's fight. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I can suggest is that you dash to Belfast, come back. I'll be here till at least half past nine, ten o'clock, and we'll see what we can sort out for you when you come back. If you've missed all the flights, but I mean, then you're going to be coming all the way back to then maybe not get on a flight. It's up to you whether you'd be safer to change to tomorrow's flight. I, I go back to Belfast if uh, if the time is uh, is not enough. Just uh, change tomorrow morning. Change to tomorrow morning, yeah. OK, so we'll see you when you get back, fingers crossed. With less than an hour to make a return trip to the city centre, time's going to be tight. In Bristol, having completely run out of cardboard, the boys' efforts have stalled and Michelle's not impressed. That's awful. We have uh, a plethora of packaging. Finish off with a bit of plastic from a drinks bottle over on that side. I think my have to do a little bit better with that one. <laughs> But luckily, Peter and John have rustled up a substitute. More beach mats. These are our, uh, our beach mats. They're going to come in quite handy on the tour, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, hopefully we'll cover our bikes. So. We have ten minutes, lads, to check in on this flight. <laughs> Is that ready? Yeah, that's fine. We'll can get we that checked in. Yeah, we can. It's like it's a knockout. We're going to get the back on first so we can get it on board. <laughs> Because it is yeah, for a charity bike ride, we've been extra lenient here because it's not uh, it's not the best. Any more passengers travelling to Inverness? With only minutes to spare, the boys and their alternative bike bags are finally allowed to check in. Are we all in? Dun and 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 Over in Belfast, Sua Zhao and her friends should be well on their way to the hostel, but there's been a change of plan. So can she change to Newcastle? The Newcastle, maybe? The, the, Newcastle. Used to, the Newcastle, you still need to be here back here for five to nine to get on the Newcastle flight. That's the Suwa has now decided to try and catch the last flight to Newcastle with her friends and spend the weekend with them. Turn for this hostel to... To tell them this one here. Yes. And to make sure she gets that flight, she wants the hostel to send her passport direct by taxi. Can you remember your room number? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Twenty-seven. Twenty-six. Nine. Twenty-seven. 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 Yes. Oh, hello. My name is Tracy. I work for EasyJet at Belfast International Airport. Um, I have a passenger here who has left their passport in your hostel. Is there any way that you could put that in a taxi and get it to the airport and the, the passenger will pay for the taxi once it arrives? It's just otherwise she isn't going to be able to travel tonight. Thanks for your help now. Thank you. Bye. You definitely have your passport there. He's going to ring me back and try and arrange to get the passport in a taxi as quickly as possible. So as soon as he rings me back, we'll go from there and see what we can do for you. OK. The hostel's happy to help, but will the taxi arrive in time? At East Midlands Airport, a rather unusual national team are about to check in for a flight to Rome. We've had our successes in cricket and rugby. Now it's the turn of Andrew Wiggins and Rodney Clark to lead England to glory in the Fireworks World Cup. Yeah, it's quite a big competition. Uh, it's a very prestigious event. Uh, there's lots of different countries taking part. We're up against uh, countries like France and Italy, uh, Brazil, Spain. So, yeah, we want to win it. Thankfully, they're not taking everything they need today. Around £40,000 worth of fireworks. The fireworks have already left. They went uh, overland. We loaded them onto a 45-foot articulated lorry, so we're not actually taking them on the plane with us. Uh, we meet them over there. With the fireworks en route and morale high, there's only one thing bothering Andy. I think all the judges are Italian, actually, which, uh, which, which may or may not be a good thing. Uh, they may be as honest as the day is long uh, and, be and be completely fair. But um, they know their fireworks, that's for sure. And hopefully, at the end of the day, they'll make the right decision. At Gatwick, the morning flight to Inverness is getting ready to leave. And pilot Chris Pell is expecting some special guests. Wife Debbie has arrived with an entourage of children to check in. Well, the plan is that uh, my son Jamie and daughter Emmy and the five orphan kids for the Chernobyl Children Lifeline meeting me on board the aircraft any second now and we're on our way out to Inverness 
into a hotel and they're going to go uh, dolphin washing later on today. In the UK, we might take a trip to the seaside for granted, but for the children, it's much more than just a day out. Uh, Belarus is a landlocked country, and of course, these kids have never seen the sea before, let alone a beach or waves. And I guess they all might get a bit seasick, including me. Amelia, that's you. Uh, that's a nice. Thank you very much. That's really kind. Okay, thank you. Hello. Once on board, the kids are greeted by their very own pilot. Come on, you want to go look with uh, Chris? Go with Chris McKeith. One of the advantages of that is you get a quick peek in the cockpit before you take off. And up in the air, the VIP treatment doesn't let up. Hello, Debbie. How are you? Hi, fine. Right? Yeah, really good. Thank you very much. How are you all? You OK? I've got you all a little present for me to check. Oh, thank you, Chris. Oh, okay. well, there we go. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's really kind. Give me a little present. Press a button. Here we are. If you pull, pull that out, that's the battery. I'm there. And then you press... You do that? Jamie, do you want me to help you <laughs> While some of the kids are liking the attention, for others, it's a bit much. OK, this is uh, Chris here for the uh, Dribble children. Hope you have a lovely time back there. We'll be uh, on the ground for about half an hour. I hope you think good. I'll see you soon. Blushes aside, the kids are in for a great day out. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on the ground in Belfast, the Newcastle flight is about to leave. <laughs> and there's still no sign of Sulwar's passport. I live in Noah. Just a 50 minutes left. With check-in about to close, it's not looking good. Oh, yeah, 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 that's it. Hello? OK, hello? This way? Hello? Hello, hello? Are you, are you willing yes. to pay that? Too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much? 25. 25? OK, okay. thank you very much. OK, all the best. The taxi might have arrived, but is it too late? Hello? Hi there. Yes. So, passport is here. Right. Do you want where? Do you want what to the Newcastle? Newcastle. Uh, yes, New Newcastle. Newcastle. I'll transfer you both on to the Newcastle jet. Yeah, no yeah. problem. So at least you're getting to fly. Thank eh? you very much. No problem. She may not be going to Edinburgh, but with the delights of Newcastle's nightlife ahead, Sunwa's not too disappointed. There are a lot of like club in Newcastle. Just the silly blurbs for for today, maybe. You might go clubbing. Yes, <laughs> of course. It's my hometown. I love Newcastle. Your hometown? Yes, oh, that's where I'm from. After a stressful hour, Sunwa and her friends are clear for takeoff. <laughs> Mike, have you finished that yet? Yeah, making the final connection. <laughs> in Valmontoni, on the outskirts of Rome, the British fireworks team have been working through the night in their bid for the World Championship. They're mad. They've been up since yesterday morning. Probably be about 48 hours before they go to bed. All, all for 26 minutes. To get those 26 minutes, two tons of fireworks need to be wired and connected to a computer. A seemingly mammoth task, but Andy's not worried. I'm feeling very confident if, uh, if we manage to get the show out and wire it in how it should be. Uh, I'm very confident that we're going to do well. As darkness falls, the crowds gather, and it's time for the team to see if all their hard work has paid off. Ready, arm, and five, four, three, two, one, fire. <laughs> Dell caught the flight to Edinburgh and made it back in time with the children for their holiday to Spain. The bikes got to Inverness in one piece, allowing Peter Loveday and his friends to raise £2,000 for charity. And the British fireworks team weren't at all surprised to find...